<laughs> OnlyFans has less microtransactions than this. <laughs> God damn it, man. This is hilarious. This Hi, is YouTube. Welcome to another video. Today is actually a little bit of a different video I wanted to make. Uh, so yeah, I, I want to actually take a look at the reviews of the first Ascendant. I spent um, on Steam itself close to 70 hours already. I also played a game on console um, after, you know, after me sitting all day on the computer, I switched to the couch and I play on, on console. So I, I have a decent, you know, uh, play time for considering the fact that the game came out uh, a little bit more than a week ago. I'm actually interested to see what, what do people write um, <clears throat> in terms of, um, you know, share their opinions on Steam because it has mixed reviews and it has... Uh, it's a 50-50 ratio what I've seen so far, so i um, happy to look at what people are writing about the game, what do they feel, and in the end of the video I'll share you my thoughts about um, how I feel about the game after spending close to 100 hours in the game. Yeah, let's see what how many reviews in general, so it's 46,000 reviews, uh, mostly mixed, so around 24,000 positive reviews and about 22,000 negative reviews. I actually read the first review over here and uh, basically this guy summarized it pretty pretty well uh, what this game is all about and what he likes and dislikes and i highly i have a very similar opinion about the game like this guy so let me just read through the highlights this looter shooter has a lot of shocking similarities to both games for example warframe and destiny 2 the things that are uh, similar to warframes the upgrading modding system uh, is uh, similar uh, upgrading mod cards and dissolving them for upgrade materials, elemental and physical weaknesses, mastery ranks, defensive missions, third person perspective, level cap, uh, character switching, uh, um, and ultimate prime counterparts, uh, relic loot system, uh, universal double jump and hooking, um, firing range, long uh, crafting times, uh, um, and, and stuff like that. Destiny equivalent mechanics, exotic weapons, power level, um, armor and modules, uh, and weapon loadouts, gear level infusion, weapon ammo types and ammo, um, dungeons, uh, intercepts, um, open zone activities, patrols, open zone fast travel, nearly identical weapon uh, archetypes, scout rifle, pulse rifle, hand cannon, sniper, shotgun, and etc. And he highlights the good things about the game he likes, borrowing mostly good mechanics from familiar games uh, in, in the genre like Warframe and Destiny. Gunplay feels like uh, feels quite solid, almost Destiny tier. Sound design is uh, immaculate. Visual feedback is solid. The ability to lock and reroll substats. Thank the Lord, this should be industry standard. I I really like this as well. Ultimate Prime character variants are technically obtainable for free. Um, Void Intercept battles feel relatively original and are great balance and challenge and fun. The bad thing. Uh, overpriced microtransactions, uh, inability to get most any cosmetics without paying real money. General lack of polish, uh, translation, uh, grammatical animations, performance and etc. Poor movement options when compared to Warframe, relatively boring and uninspired story, Nexon which has a history of having overpriced predatory microtransactions and poor management. The verdict, if you are familiar with Warframe and Destiny or just want to jump sometime into a decent looter shooter, you should give this a try. Just don't dump $100 on the Ultimate Bunny Bundle. I agree. With this comment, I actually, this is very well summarized um, about the game. Uh, and my two cents about this situation over here is a lot of people and most of the negative comments, uh, if we look about this, uh, let, let's put a few negative comments. Most of the people that I've checked over here um, complain about the microtransactions, about the inability to uh, buy colors and they stay, you know, forever. 
they are not perma. I agree with the people and their frustration about the microtransactions and stuff like that. However, uh, I disagree with one thing that most people complain about um, and that it's a ripoff of Destiny 2 or if it's a ripoff of Warframe or whatsoever. Now, first of all, disclaimer, you don't have to play this game, guys. If, if this is hitting you in the feelings that this is that this game has similarities to both games you you can just stick to your destiny or you can stick to your warframe no one is forcing you to play this game my opinion on this situation is i actually like that they took things from both worlds there is things that destiny was lacking and you were playing and you were saying man i wish this had uh, for example the modding system that uh, that is in in warframe or then in Warframe, you would say, man, I wish I had the first person, for example, from, from Destiny, or I wish I had, you know, things that Destiny has and stuff like that. In my opinion, the devs uh, were smart about it to take different things from different games, because after all, we are talking about the category of a game. The category is a looter shooter. After all, it is probably very difficult to develop a completely new system within this category they analyzed both games probably they had probably dedicated teams that were analyzing destiny dedicated teams that were analyzing warframe and they wanted to make something in the middle which is great i believe that this is fresh air in the category of shooter looter which is it brings a little bit of good from both worlds right they have the bad side obviously with the microtransactions and they want to you know milk out money from people for cosmetics and stuff which in my opinion is effed up with the situation with the color patterns and 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 you know if you want to color something you need to pay for it first of all okay that's fine but the biggest problem is that i agree with the the majority of the people is i mean if you are after all going to pay for let's say a purple color that you want to you know purple out your entire outfit you need to pay money for it and then if you want to change your color you lose the color that you originally paid for and this has been addressed too much and in the first live stream that the developers went out to collect feedback that has been over commented so i believe they will be smart enough to make this change and adjustments if they want to satisfy the community the other thing is the game is actually pretty new right it's a week out it will be polished it uh, certain things will be adjusted content will be released so fingers crossed that Naxon gaming has the budget has the motivation has everything to pushing forward game into the right direction here we have another uh, comment let's let, let's take a look at this guy over here saying classic Naxon greed that brutally pushes you towards pay to win by making obtaining important items in game as difficult annoy rare as possible i disagree with this right now there is nothing in the game that is super super difficult to acquire and it's not pay to win it's not a pvp game in in a pvp game you can say okay this guy paid for getting the best weapon or getting the best uh, whatever whatever and he swiped his card to destroy you it's not a pvp game it's a looter shooter for you to enjoy some kind of a progression right i don't want to you know, swipe my card and have, you know, progression taken away from me. Because this game is all about progression. This game is all about you spending a little bit of your time, have the motivation to get the next ultimate descender, and you need to work for it. You need to go and you need to find the spot where to grind this piece, get a little bit of frustrated to not get it, although it says 30% drop chance or whatsoever, right? I mean, this is just part of the game. So I don't consider this game a pay to win. Um, it's, you know, you can buy convenience. It's even called in the store convenience if you want. I don't see a problem with this. Let me know in the comments below if my comment in general is, you know, if you don't agree with it or disagree, agree. Um, I would love to have a discussion. I would love to come back in the comments, answer to your comment, uh, what I believe um, the situation is and stuff like that. This guy, extremely predatory monetization, extremely predatory monetization. Again, I disagree. You don't have to spend a zero money, a penny on the game to enjoy the game, right? It's a free to play game. And like I mentioned before in, in my videos, and, and I mentioned it before, I like to buy battle passes in games because this way I kind of support a game that was, that brings fun to me on the table. And it gives me a little bit of rewards for doing this, right? It's 20 bucks. That's your 
Big Mac menu at McDonald's, man. That's 20 bucks. That's not a lot of money. And if if you're like me spending 12 hours per day playing this game, I really would like to give a little bit back to the developers. Although if it, if it's Nexon game games that is a huge company that makes hundreds of millions of dollars per year and stuff like that. I don't care. Thank you for releasing the game. Here's my 20 bucks. Give me my battle pass. I'm happy with it. However, I'm not going to spend more. I'm not going to unlock more descenders for money. It doesn't make sense. I'm not going to buy a bundle because it has a crystallized item in there that is going to unlock my progression and make me more stronger. I would rather go and grind it off because this is part of the game. Let's check out this guy over here. This game has uh, potential, but they are going to, uh, to the way of uh, Gaijin and it's disgusting. Uh, third party data collection to, to make money off you before you even play the game. For a game that is made entirely from parts taken from other games, Warframe, Destiny 2 and others is incredibly boring. The characters are unlikable, run uh, off the mill East Asian stereotypes. The English dialogue is clunky because it's translated but not adapted. The character designs are tried. Uh, it feels like um, I have already seen every one of them in several other Asian games. Most of the female descendants look like they are from a porn parody <laughs> of another game, but they also sell made outfits for them in case you need 400% hentai bonus in your build. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is this is funny. A couple male descendants look like a Korean boy band members. I think uh, I find exploiting uh, desperate horny players to make money uh, very lame. But I know a lot of players will consider this a plus. All right, this is a long review. I'm not gonna go through all of them. Uh, but yeah, yeah, those are you know what people think about the game. Let me know what you think about the game. I like I said, I'm uh, leaning more towards the positive part. I really enjoyed the game. Um, it's a lot of fun, in my opinion. It's a freshly released game. It was released on this uh, here on Steam. It says 30th June. Uh, however, release date it says official release date says 2nd of July. Um, I'm confused about the release date, but um this is a fresh new game give them a little bit of time for me like i said i'm having a blast yeah if you would like to yeah share your opinion with me i'm more than happy to have a discussion in the comments below um i by the way my socials are up here right now and if you would like to uh join my discord i'm actually building a new discord uh for first descendant uh players uh, where we can um, share knowledge together, where we can group up in parties and where we can grind certain materials or things in the game together. And I'm trying to build my own, you know, small first ascendant community. If you want to be part of this, make, make sure you join our Discord. It's brand new, so it's almost empty right now. But yeah, if you watch the entire video, I really appreciate you doing so. And um, I would really appreciate if you also like this uh, video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.